Hi, this is Mark Carrington from MyBitcoinProfits.com. In this video, I'm going to walk through the steps to fund a Binance exchange account with Ethereum. My plan is to buy some altcoins using Ethereum, which I have holding in one of my wallets. The process is fairly straightforward. I've logged into Binance and I will then go across to Deposits Withdrawals will give you a long list of the currencies that they accept deposits in. I've just typed in ETH, put in Ethereum, well that gave me the information about Ethereum but what I really wanted to press was press this button here called Deposit Withdrawal. There's a button here called Deposit and that's the button I needed to press. So let's press that it'll do is it'll give me an address. There's the address it's given to me. I'm going to cut and paste that into a onto a sheet so that I can just keep track of what I'm actually doing. So I've cut and pasted that. There's a copy address button here so I'll just show you you can press that so it's succeeded in copying that I now need to go across to my wallet it says send only Ethereum to this address as any other currency will make it coins will be deposited immediately after 30 network confirmation that's quite a few confirmations and after making a deposit you can check progress on the history page so there's the update and this is the first time I've done this so now I have I'm holding my Ethereum in a in a wallet. Um, get my Ether wallet. I'm actually using an offline browser, so this is not the online browser. As you'll see up at the top here, you'll see that it says file e Ether wallet. So I've downloaded a wallet. I keep it on a USB key, so it means that my private key is sitting there offline. Now I've already logged in. The default is it lands up here at the new wallet page. I've already logged in and I'm ready to send Ether and tokens. And the reason I've already logged in is I do not want anybody to see my private key. So i am cut and paste that address. In fact, if I just go like this, it should be there. And if I um, if I look at my thing there, it's, it starts with zero, ends with E. Just make sure you cut and paste the whole thing. I'm going to send to Ethereum, and you'll see that I have seven available. So I'm sending to Ethereum because I'm going to invest about a thousand dollars in alt altcoins. The next thing that becomes important is gas limit. Gas limit is the amount of gas to send. Basically, this is the transaction fee. And the there is. Um, when the network is congested or busy, you just increase the amount of gas. This is the default amount, and the last time I did this a couple of days ago, it, it worked fine. So I'll generate the transaction. It shows you what the transaction would look like. So if you wanted to paste that into an HTML document, we're going to send the transaction you said you are about to send. So the um, this is my account. That's the zero ending with E. Yes, that's the correct one. I'm sending to E what my available balance is, what the gas limit is. And it'll ask me, yes, I'm sure, make a transaction. So that transaction is on its way. I can check the transaction status button here. It'll open up a... Oh, this, this my Ethereum wallet has this very irritating take you through all the ways to protect your documents or to protect yourself and then we'll check transaction status pending the transaction is found so the transaction has been it's located in the transaction pool of the node you're connected to you see all the information is there and all ready to go so now all we just need to do is to wait for confirmations the 30 confirmations that are needed for the funds to arrive on the other side and we should be all ready to go. So I'll pause the video here. I'll just go put a, a timer on here. It is 12 minutes to 6. Now if I press the, um, the verify transaction status, this actually goes to the Ether, Ethernet 
sorry, the Ethereum blockchain and has to look to see what the status is. So I have pressed that and we can see where, it, where it, the Ethereum block explorer, we can see that the there's the timestamp, one minute 46 seconds ago, it says it is, block height is pending, the transaction is pending. So it's pending confirmation. I'll do a, a refresh, so it's two minutes, um, no progress yet. So I'll hit the pause video again, the pause button again. It's now uh, seven minutes after I did the transaction, and so it's five to six, you'll remember it was 12 to six, and we now have the first block confirmation. So we're waiting for 30, so it'll take a little while to complete this. It's um, now 6 p.m., so 12 minutes, and this transaction is showing up on the Ethereum Blockchain Explorer as being successful. There are 16 block confirmations. So a quick reflash, it's gone to 17, but Binance said they would only be recognizing a transaction after 30 block confirmations. So we'll just step across to see what they actually do in practice. So 17 block confirmations. It's always good news. The They said, go and look in the history tab. So we can see here that the transaction has arrived on this side. We're in the process of confirming. They've said that we've confirmed 20 out of 30. So we all know we're looking at the same thing. It says 21 out of 30. So we're very close to doing a transaction, completing the transaction. And it's taken less than 15 minutes. My guess is going to be less than 15 minutes by the time it is completed. Now what my plan is, is we're at 24 now. Binance has a has its own coin called BNB. It's this one here, BNB.BTC. Now, what they do is is that they or BNB.ETH, they discount your trading if you pay for your trades with BNB. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to buy some BNB. So as soon as I have confirmation that this account is open, I am going to go and buy an amount of BNB. The coin is also expected to grow in value because they have a, an inflation system that they delete a certain amount of coins every day. So the coin is expected to grow in value. So I'm going to buy more BNB than I need. So I'll need some to cover trading and then I will use some for an investment. So we're going to head across to the exchange. I'm going to look for BNB markets. So the exchange buttons are here on the right hand side. We can see the BNB markets and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm hoping to find an ETH BNB market. Now that's really unfortunate because the oh, I might have to do it this way around. I have Ethereum. This is the market I'm interested in. So I'm now on the Ethereum one. I'll uh, press that. And then basically I want to buy roughly $200 worth of BNB using Ethereum. And you can see here on the strikeout, I'm just going to highlight it for you. On this fee box here, you can see that the fee would normally be 0.1% and I'm going to pay 0.05 provided I use BNB. And that's a default option when you start up on your homepage and you first log in, it's an option to choose. Now, question, next question is, is how to choose the um, the 
bid and ask price what I typically do these are the these are the ask prices here on the on the left hand side they're ordered from the cheapest to the most expensive and then these are the bid prices this side here and typically what I do is I just take I'll, I'll put in a bid price they always default and put in the ask price I'm going to put in the bid price and it'll see it's put that bid price in there and then I will adjust that to somewhere between those two so you'll see the difference between those two so I had 684 703 so that's 16 so basically what I'll do is I will add 8 to this to go to 92 and that puts me right in the middle and while we've been sitting there we'll see that my Ethereum balance is now available for use. Now the next thing I have to do is to work out how much Ethereum I'm going to need. Now I've done a little bit of work on there is basically if I want to do $200 worth I need to take $200 and divide it into the Ethereum price. All right, well, this is how the calculation needs to go. This platform works differently to the other trading platforms I've used. We'll, we'll, we'll put in the price that we that we want to do. So I'm going to have to update that one. So 19331. And we've got the price is moving around a fair bit. So we're, we're gonna, I'm just going to put in 19350 and then just see what happens. I'm going to copy that. Well, I'll copy that in a little while. What I need to do is I need to work out how much Ethereum I, I actually want to buy. So Ethereum price was 1193. I want to buy $200 worth. So I go 1 over X times 200 equals. So that's 0.16 Ethereum is roughly what I want to do. Now on the other trading platforms I use, you can just cut and paste this number and stick it into the total column and then it'll work out the amount of units, but it doesn't work that way here. So what I have to do is I have to take this number here and divide it by my bid price. So I've cut and pasted that one. And it's 8.7 BNBs is what I need to do. Now, Binance has a peculiarity in that it does not like trading in partial tokens. So you basically need to use whole tokens. So I'm going to buy a whole token so that I do not leave any orphan orphans around. So I need, I need roughly nine. So I'll go back to 19261. And I've got 70 different, so I'm going to add 30 to that is 91. And I hit buy BNB. And it says success. So I've now bought the BNB and I am ready to start trading. So where will I find the BNB? If I go to funds. Deposit withdrawals hide the small assets and there we'll see my BNB. So it's the 9 BNB minus the trading cost so I'm now ready to trade the other coins. And we can see my Ethereum is sitting there so I started with 2 and I used 0.18 roughly to 0.17 something to set up that BNB tree. So that's the, the process to I've gone from my Ether wallet sent it to an address which I got here on the deposits and what's called streams. I've then gone to the exchange and I have found the market I want to trade. So I am now ready to start trading my other markets which will, so for example the next coin I want to do is is Aon. I'm on the Ethereum markets A-I-O-N and that'll be the next coin that I want to trade. So then I'll just go through the same process again. I'll have to calculate the amount of um, Ethereum that I want to 
spent calculate the approximate number of units remember to round the units up or down to a round number so don't leave any orphans around and off I go that's it for this video happy bitcoining